Tip Trace. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Trace. Today we are taking a look at a really awesome design by Justus Galaberda. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, it's a really great little flat icon, um, but instead of just doing a standard flat design, what he's actually done is incorporate that into a sort of stamp element to it as well. Um, it's really good. You see a lot of flat design stuff on the internet nowadays and a good way to sort of set that apart from the rest is to give it something like a unique element. Uh, in this case, the stamp setting that it's got here just makes it stand out amongst the crowd from the rest of the flat design stuff which is rampant all over the internet these days um, so without any further ado we're just going to dive right in I will say I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment as you can probably hear in my voice so apologies for that um, hopefully it won't be too distracting uh, but let's just dive right into step one which is the analysis part one analysis Okay, so like I said, there's a number of things I really love about this design. Um, the first off is what you might call its setting. Okay, it's taken sort of a pretty standard flat design icon, a well-designed one, but it's a pretty standard one, and incorporated that into something um, that makes it stand out from the crowd. So the fact that it's incorporated into a stamp, really unique, something that I really love about it, makes it um, a bit more personality, a bit more charm. Uh, it works really well. Secondly, I really love the contrast that he's done between the sort of hard geometry of some of the shapes and the smooth curves of others. What I mean by that is the clouds, for example, there's nothing in there that isn't pretty much a perfect ellipse. Okay, um, perfectly proportional ellipse, that is. Um, whereas the stars with the soft curves on the edges, the curves on the wings, things like that, um, while still quote unquote geometrical, um, they add a little bit of contrast to the design, especially when it comes to the hard lines that are sort of splitting the sky up in the background as well. So I'm just going to put contrast between straights and curves. That's another thing that I really love about this. Um, thirdly, like always, I love the color palette. It's done really well. I've already sampled off all the different colors that I'm going to need, as you can see down the side there. Um, but it's really strong, really bold. One thing I might change or, or experiment with is making the background sky the same color as the border of this ship um, what that might do is sort of bring the background into the design more rather than it just being a setting um, it'll make it look like the ship is actually blasting off into space out of the stamp rather than just poking out the edge of it um, not an issue at all in any way um, just something that it might be worth looking into um, so we're going to do that um, Pretty much that is what I love about this. Uh, other than the fact that just the weighting, the composition is really, really good. Really nice rule of thirds here. Really nice golden spiral coming around with these clouds. Um, overall, just a really great piece of work. So let's dive right in. Let's deconstruct it and let's see how it was made. Part two, deconstruction. Okay, so the next step is to break this down into its core elements and start to think about how it was possibly made. Um, I'm going to say it was made in Illustrator, maybe Affinity Designer, um, probably the safest bet. Uh, and it was probably built using a variety of different tools. For example, the smoke clouds here, I'd say would be a combination of perhaps Pathfinder and Shape Builder tools to create these really nice sort of extra circles. Um, the stars, again, probably made with Pathfinder. The ship, possibly with a pen tool, possibly by altering rounded rectangles. Um, We'll see. So let's just jump right in then. The first thing you're going to need to do is uh, separate out your color palette, which I've already done, of course. Um, secondary to that, you need to think about how this piece was constructed and which pieces you're going to start building first. So probably the rocket is going to be on a layer by itself. Probably the clouds or the smoke stream is going to be a layer by itself. And then the rest is probably going to be on the background layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock off what we've got before so we can't accidentally select any of this, making sure that I can still get color samples from my palette, which I can. Okie dokie. Let's start by building the rocket, I think. Um, what I am actually going to do is just select this guy here and bring the opacity down just a little bit so that it's not so distracting when we're creating our artwork and we can actually see um, when we trace over lines and things like that. Now, I'm probably going to start with the rocket and then use masks and things to take care of the background. Seems like the easiest way to do it. So let's just jump right in. Um, to build the core of the rocket, I'm probably going to use Shape Builder um, or Pathfinder tools. So let's grab a rectangle tool. Let's come through and let's take our dark blue line. But of course, because we sampled that from a fill, we're just going to have to swap those around. 
And I think this is probably going to be about six points thick. So let's give it a go and see. Let's take our rectangle and just draw roughly over the top of this here. Like so. Not bad. That looks pretty much there. Okay. However, we've got sharp corners and things which don't actually matter for this point, but will in the future. So I'm just going to go to my strokes. And when I start copying things later on, I can make sure they're round. Um, I'm then also going to take my ellipse tool. Just going to make sure I'm over the anchor point here. If you're not seeing these little green and purple lines, it's because you don't have smart guides on. So if you go to view and choose smart guides, you'll get all of that information. Uh, and then I'm just going to click and drag until I get a circle that is the right width and the right height. Then I'm just going to stretch this all the way down until the middle point lines up with the middle of our line there, which seems about right. And then I'm going to shift it down so it's the right thickness. And that seems to be it. Let's grab this here and I'm just going to shorten just a little bit these lines. And what this does is it just makes this curve a little bit sharper along the top whilst remaining leaving these curves very nice and smooth. And now what we can do is if we just select our shape builder tool by selecting the two shapes that we want to merge and going down to our shape builder icon down on the side, which is here looks like two little circles with a mouse over it. What this does is it takes all your elements, defines the separate shapes there are, and if you click and drag over them, you can merge all those shapes, like so. Turns that all into one shape. You can do other stuff as well. If you hold Alt, you can see it turns to a little minus sign, and anything that you click and drag over will be removed from your shape. Very powerful. So what we need to do is click on the top one, drag all the way through to the middle, and we have the core part of our rocket ship there. Nice and easy. OK, let's keep building then. So the next thing we need to do is create a little rectangle for the bottom. So I'm just going to bring this out like so. And I'm going to bring it down further so that the bottom lines up with the middle of our rocket here. And that looks a little bit thick, actually. So what I might do is just drop all of these down to five points like so. OK, we can then obviously make it a little bit thinner as well like that. And this one does have some lines going through the middle of it, which correspond directly to the lines of this smoke, um, which we'll get to in a moment. Let's create all the easy elements first. We're going to need an ellipse tool, of course. If you hold Alt and Shift while clicking and dragging that, you can create the top half of this ellipse here. You can then go to the Direct Selection tool and just click the bottom part to release it. Nice and easy. Now, at the moment, we've been tracing quite a lot, but the show is called Tip Trace. Um, but what you should be thinking about here Rather than thinking about how to trace the different elements of the thing and just there you go, you've made a design. You should be thinking about how this thing is constructed. You should be thinking about it as if it were an actual object, okay? So this isn't just a flat rectangle with a point, okay? This is actually a tube, it's a cylinder. Um, and what that allows you to do is it helps you to start thinking about how you can apply this sort of stuff to your own designs. When you're coming up with a sketch, when you're coming up with a logo, you should think about it as a physical thing. Um, what that means is when it comes to creating something, different angles, different sizes, different shapes, you should have a better understanding of how that object is constructed and therefore your artwork will be more accurate, will be more pleasing to the eye, that sort of thing. Um, but at the moment, what we're really trying to do is just sort of break it down into its core elements um, and see how this thing is made. So whilst we are tracing, you shouldn't be passively tracing. It's like an active thing. You're thinking about what you're doing and why you're making those decisions. For example, if we were to trace this now, okay, we would just take this wing and we would just sort of come down like this and like that and then come across like that. You know, most would call that a fairly good job, okay? However, if you're thinking about this actively and you're actively tracing, then you're probably going to realise that it's best if you make sure that all your elements line up together. So if we take these two rectangles here, the bottom lines of both of these rectangles are perfectly in line. Now if you were just to trace this, like we just did, yep, you come through and you draw that and you bring this over here and you bring that up and then you come over and you click it and then there you go. It's not an active process, you're just tracing. What you should do is think about the design. These wings, for example, will and should line up perfectly for the sake of aesthetics, for the sake of building a construct an object that is real yeah these lines should line up with your other elements therefore rather than tracing you need to think about actively tracing this section here for example needs to come out here the same 
thickness, the same weight, the same alignment as the bottom of this rocket has the same alignment for the bottom of the wing. It seems like a stupid thing to think about, but when it comes down to the actual process of making your own icons, you'll start to realize how important it is to think about an object as something that's real. Now let's automatically zoom out. That looks straight away better than the one where I just started up here and sort of went all oh, kind of like this, yeah? Um, it seems more solid, more grounded um, than perhaps the other one was. Okay, just gonna bring this in just a little bit so we don't get any overlap there. And there we go, we're happy. Next step, we're just gonna grab our pen tool again and just, again, making sure it lines up with the path, just bringing it all the way up until it intersects. And voila, we're building our wings. Now, the other way that you need to be thinking about creating stuff when you are creating it is efficiency and symmetry. Now, symmetry is very important in these icon designs. So rather than grabbing my pen tool again and making sure this lines up and coming through and doing this, we've already made one wing. We know that one wing is correct. So let's just group those elements together with control G. Let's duplicate them with alt shift and drag. And then we can reflect them with object transform reflect vertical. And we've got a wing ready to go because we were careful and concise when creating this wing. When we bring this one in alignment with this stroke here, we know that this is going to be perfectly aligned with the rest of our artwork. Okay. Now, I may not be able to do it because I've got uh, pixel perfect on, which I do, so I'm going to have to turn that off. Um, but we know that when we align that up with our shape here, we know it's going to be exactly the same. So I'll just quickly turn off pixel perfect. There we go. And we'll bring this back in to intersect. Voila. We know that this shape is perfectly symmetrical now. Okay. If you wanted to be extra perfect about it, you could grab your two element wings here and group them together. And then you could select everything we've done so far and we could align them to the center like that. And now we know that everything is perfectly center aligned. Everything is perfectly equal in weighting. And that is very important when it comes to creating little icons like this. Okay, so let's just draw in two extra lines here, like so, and we'll come back to this later. But we're gonna bring in from the center of our path to the intersect points, two lines like so. Okay, so that is the core element of our rocket done. Um, we're gonna come back to the colors later because it may be better to duplicate shapes and just switch them to fills. It may be better to redraw them underneath. I don't know yet, we're gonna get to that. In the meantime, we're going to move down here and start creating our different smoke elements. So we need to now go to our different layer, clouds here, and we can start building these elements. Now we're going to take these two path elements that we drew on our rocket and we're going to cut them with Control X. We're then going to select our cloud layer and with Control F, we're going to paste them in place. Now we can just drag these all the way down and we know that they're going to line up with the rest of our shapes here. Okay, it doesn't matter that we've overlapped a little bit for now. If you want to, you can come in and bring them up like that. But it doesn't matter, you'll see why. We just need to know that those are perfectly aligned with the rocket and therefore perfectly aligned with the smoke that's coming out of it. We can lock off our rocket layer so we don't accidentally select anything. And then we can start thinking about these clouds. We're gonna need an ellipse tool for pretty much all of this, okay? Now here is where you need a little bit again to do some active tracing rather than, you know, passive tracing, okay? What you could do, again, is take your pen tool, come along, try and do this, but then you're not thinking about how these shapes are made, okay? You're not thinking about the construct of the thing. You're just thinking about copying it. If you go to your ellipse tool and you draw a perfect ellipse, it doesn't matter about the size so much for now. If you look at the ratio of that curve, which we know to be perfect one-to-one -one circle, yeah, you can start to see how that relates to everything else that's on these clouds here. Pretty much everything you see is a perfect circle but only a segment of it is, is visible. So what you need to do is think about where the center point of these circles actually are. For example, if we were to draw this large circle here, okay, if you were to follow that all the way around, roughly the center of that circle, I guess, would be around here, if you can see where my logic is. So if we click and drag from here and hold Alt, so it grows from the center and hold Shift, we should create a circle that pretty much lines up. That's not gonna be perfect. So what we can do is go in and just realign that like so until you get something you're roughly happy with. You're gonna have to shrink that down in size a little bit. And now you've got a shape that pretty much covers the element that you need. 
So if we just cut that, we can see that this is a center point of that circle, which means that when we come to cut this out, if we were to copy and duplicate this and shrink it down, my bet is that it would line up perfectly with that smaller circle in the middle there. Okay, so what this is, is actually a bunch of overlaying different circles and segments that he's um, pathfinded and shape builded into creating these separate elements. Okay, now let's take this sort of one shape at a time. Let's take the main shapes first, and then we'll come in and do these extra little elements. There's also parts where it's overlapping as well. So we'll take a look at that. Let's copy and paste in place and shift this along a little bit. Now, I'm thinking that this circle here is going to intersect perfectly with the center of it with the edge of this circle on the left. So if I were to shrink this down whilst the center of the circle is intersected with this point of the circle here, and then move it up, you can see that it lines up again pretty much perfectly, which means to create these, we can bring this shape over until the edges intersect and then we can shift it down. Oops, sorry, excuse me, shift it down like so, so that the left edge is still um, intersecting until we intersect with our line at the top. Now, this is why we drew the lines first, okay? Um, when we have that shape that is that size, we can now bring that up to the point where it intersects happily, where we want that shape to be. Probably it's gonna be so that these two corner points align. If I were to select this point here, you can see we have a point and this point here. We can bring that up until they intersect there. We've now got a perfect row of shapes along here. So all we need to do now is just keep doing this until we've created everything that we're happy with, okay? Now, it's possible that this is a pure reflection. So let's find out. Object, transform, reflect. Looks like it pretty much might be. Once you draw this in, that's probably gonna be a pretty much perfect reflection as well. So let's just work on this one side for now. Once we've done that, we can reflect it over here. Let's duplicate this shape. In fact, let's take this one here because it's possible that that is the same size. Let's bring it out and over like so and line it up like so. And yeah, I'd say that's probably a safe bet that it is the same size as the previous version. Let's hide those clouds for a second and think about how we're gonna create these separate elements here, okay? Probably quite easy to do, actually. Now, if I get my pen tool and bring my clouds in again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line that intersects all of these segments here, like so, okay? So I'm gonna bring my clouds back. I'm gonna grab my pen tool. I'm just gonna roughly bring this around so that it lines up like this, yeah? Now, I know that the only shapes that need to protrude, okay, are these two here and this one potentially on the edge. So I select this and I select this guy. And then I go to my path, uh, my shape builder, sorry. And this gives me an element here that I can remove, just like that, okay? If I were to then delete this, you'll see where I'm coming from. We can take this segment of the path as well and delete that. And what we're left with is a shape that pretty much perfectly lines up, okay? Um, we're gonna have to obviously remove the rest of these as well. However, they're a bit easier to do because they're just gonna intersect with that single path. So let's bring back what we've just done. Oh, it's remembering all of my undos and things like that. And let's select all of our shapes and start path building, okay? Shape building, sorry, I keep saying path building. <laughs> um, don't need you. And we don't need you or you. And we don't need you. And we don't need you. You can get out of here. Uh, don't need that either. <sighs> don't need that. Oops. We don't need this. Sorry. This section here. So we're going to have to delete that separately. We don't need you, that little guy. Um, we're going to need that one. We don't need this bit on the end. And pretty sure that's it. What we can do now is go to our direct selection tool start deleting all these different elements that we don't need. So this bit needs to come out, but all of this going into the middle can get rid of, Oops, excuse me, like so. Get rid of this point here. Get rid of these different points, including that one. Get rid of this guy, that guy needs to stay. And what we can do now is just delete this one point here and we're good to go, okay? Now, what I think I accidentally did there was delete a point that was one that we needed. 
So let's have a little look. Yep, when I removed that path there earlier, I accidentally messed that up. But that's okay, we can just fix that rather than undoing everything. So we'll just go through and get rid of these again. Um, that one needs to go, and that one needs to go. Correct. And then this one needs to go. What we can do now, for the sake of levity, uh, brevity, sorry, not levity. For the sake of brevity, we'll just join these two shapes up with what might as well be a pretty perfect curve. Okay. So we've now got our first layer shape that we're going to need. What we can do as well is copy and paste in place this segment here. Shift it down a little bit. And rotate him around a little bit. And then we can bring him back up to line with this segment here. Then we know that we don't need this whole length of this. Okay, so what we can do is go to our add segment tool. We can choose the part we want and then we can delete the rest like so. Okay, now if you wanted to, it might be easier just to come back in and draw a new circle like so. That's about right. Uh, and then sort of delete the segments you don't need. Okay, so we can get rid of this guy and get rid of this guy. Sorted. That's pretty much it. The next step is we can grab this dude here and we can bring him all the way down to line up with this previous one. If you wanted to, you can just actually select those and you can right click join and see if that works, which it does. Sometimes you get funny results with things like join. Um, and we can now, if we wanted to even, delete this segment here, copy these across, object transform reflect, and we could bring this into alignment like so, okay? Ah, now the difference is this one has just been shifted up a little bit. So what we can do, we might have to start again with this, but let's see. We can cut here, paste in place, but it's now a separate shape. And we can move it up a little bit, like so. Okay, maybe move it across. So what he's done here is he's added another little circle down there, just to give it a bit of variation, like so. Go to our path uh, shape builder again, sorry. Um, and we can just remove this little tail. Should be able to do by just clicking the point. Nope. So we can remove this little tail with the direct selection um, tool. And then we can do the same thing here by removing this point and this point. And there you go. Good to go. That whole top section is now done. Now, I explained that one quite slowly because um, it's sort of the first time we're going through it. So what I'm going to do is just sort of quickly breeze through the rest here um, using a combination of Shape Builder and Pathfinder tools. Uh, but I'm not going to go into so much detail because we've just done it in great detail there. So let's just dive right into this bit then. Um, we're going to need to find the center point of this circle, which is probably about here. Bring that up to size. Ah, not too bad. We're quite accurate on that one and bring it in like so. Like that. And then copy, paste in place with Control C, Control F, and shrink that guy down. While we're at it, let's just remove this and this. We can then probably remove that bottom one as well to get rid of that segment. And then might be able to use this one rotated and sized up for this segment here, seeing as it disappears behind that cloud. Like so. That's where you start getting into trouble. As soon as you start doing that, you get into trouble. It's best to work with circles. Otherwise, you lose this perfect geometry that he's been going with. So there aren't really many shortcuts you can do in this one. Okay. So that'll do. Let's get rid of this guy. Get rid of this guy. Let's line him up a bit better first. Again, bring this guy across so that his point lines up with there. Scale it up until it roughly fits. That should be pretty much intersecting. And then we can remove this one and this one. Next side. Um, and then let's do the same for the rest of these here. So this one's going to be quite a big circle. Like so. Now, it doesn't actually matter if what you're doing here ends up being ever so slightly different. Um, 
because where we're tracing, you know, and this bit is slightly squiffed here, we could spend a while sort of making this perfectly line up and stuff like that. But for the sake of the design, it doesn't actually matter too much, you know. So I could come in and I could take this um, shape here and I could start from the edge so I know that it's a perfect size. Then I could come through and sort of line that up like this. Um, and then what's happening here is the section point is actually a further past that center point which I've been aligning. So what I could do is come through, add in a point here where they intersect, okay? Delete and delete, and then you get a perfect lineup, that sort of thing. I can do that, probably will do that for the sake of um, teaching the tutorial. But again, if you're happy with it, then you're happy with it. It's as simple as that. Come in where this point intersects, remove these sections, job done, okay? I know that this one doesn't come all the way down, so that means this shape here is going to have to be um, uh, underneath, which is fine. Again, this one hasn't quite perfectly lined up, so let's just hide that there a little bit. Come through here with another circle that we know is roughly the right size. Line that up like so. We can see where the points overlap. We're pretty happy with it, so we can add in an anchor point there. And then we can come through and just remove the others. Yeah. So it's completely up to you. Um, now that these two points have an intersecting path, intersecting, <laughs> intersecting path. Sorry, that's the cold coming out there. Um, what we can do is select both of those shapes, go to our shape builder, hold Alt, and just drag over this line, and that'll only remove the line from there rather than moving the shape itself. Um, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with the path, uh, shape builder tool. It's really useful, really powerful. Uh, if only I could actually call it what it is and stop calling it the Pathfinder tool. Um, this one lined up, great. Let's bring him down here, shrink him down a bit. Maybe to there. Now nah, a bit more. Maybe to here, like so. That seems about right. Let's copy him across there because I imagine that's the same shape and size. So they intersect, remember? Um, let's grab all of these dudes, see if we can do anything with the shape build tool. So we can make sure those are the right curves. And that's probably it, to be honest. But what we can do is come through now and delete some of these bits we don't need. Like that guy and this guy. And let me just double check what was actually going on. Yep, there's no overlaps here, so we can delete both of these and this one as well. Um, and then we can come in with a little tiny circle and we can create this middle one, like so. Now this one's nice and easy, just delete those two. Okay, that's the clouds done. Really nice and easy. Let's group all of those together for the sake of simplicity. Um, and that's it. It's now time to figure out how to make the stars. Now this has been a bit of a long episode. Um, what I'm gonna do with this series is I'm gonna do one episode no matter how long it is. I expect that's gonna perform negatively for analytics and things like that. But what it means for me is that I know when you guys do choose to watch the whole video, you've got the whole story. So apologies, this is taking a bit longer than last time. Um, hopefully you're okay with that. If you don't want me to split up the episodes, just let me know. Um, but, the only reason I'd split up the episodes is if I was worried about revenue, which I'm not for these sort of things. They don't get many views anyway. So, um, so again, this might be an hour long episode. Sorry about that. Um, however, let's do some cool stuff. Let's make the stars and let's have them on their own layer. So we're going to make a new layer and we're going to call this stars. I'm not sure how he's made these. There could have been many different ways. Um, it could be two lines with a circle. It could be a square with four circles cut out from the corners. Who knows? Let's give it a go and see. I'm going to try the square technique first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my white fill from here and I'm going to draw over one of the larger stars. I'm going to come from the center holding Alt and Shift until I come to the edges of this part here. Okay. I'm then going to take this rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to make it into a circle by clicking and dragging all of those. Then what I'm gonna do is align the center of this circle with the edge of the square. Okay, so we've got the corner of our square here and we're gonna align that up like so. Yep. And then I'm even gonna shrink it using um, the width and height proportionately. So I can link those together and I can say something like 80%. Or what I could have done 
is just choosing choosing chosen a increment maybe one pixel and shifted it out up and left like that either way i think would achieve the same result for the sake of the fact that i like percentages i'm going to choose eight percent maybe not 80 maybe 90 percent mm, 85 percent <laughs> Uh, and then I'm going to copy these points. So now we know that those center points are still aligned. Yep. I'm just going to copy this across to each corner. Like so. And we've got our four corners. Select all your shapes and choose minus front and that will cut them away. But I think he's softened these corners a little bit. So if we go to the direct selection tool with all of these selected, we might be able to do, if we're lucky, just come into this zoom section here and round these off a little bit. Okay, so my original plan was to take this anchor point tool here and select our anchor points, turning them to curves. But what that does is that accidentally messes up all of our different corners here, which I didn't realize. What I'm gonna do is grab my rounded rectangle path tool and I'm instead gonna roughly draw over one of these segments here, like so. I'm gonna duplicate that, Control C, Control F, and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, okay? That gives us the center point of our star. What I'm gonna do then, is I'm going to take my ellipse tool and from the point where these paths overlap I'm just going to shift draw a circle until it comes to the edges you can see here of the rectangle like that okay now we can duplicate this across to each of our points like so intersect intersect like so okay and then we've got the shape that we want to retain is in these gaps here. So we go to our path binder and we just click each of these little segments like so. We can then come in and remove the outside ones. And there we go. We have our different shape. Now for me, what I'm gonna do is just merge all of these together and that creates our star, nice and easy. So it depends if you want a sharp edged star. Let me just move those off to somewhere where you can see them. A sharp edged star or a rounded one. I think the rounded one works a million times better for this. So what we're going to do is just line these up and we can just go through and line these up with the rest as well. Scale them up a little bit, move them around, scale them down a little bit. Nice and easy. OK, so I'm just going to quickly do that and we'll be back when I'm done. Again, it looks like this has actually been mirrored. So rather than doing this individually, what I'm going to do is just do one side and then I'm going to duplicate that across to the other side. OK, so we're going to shrink these down so they all fill up the points that we need. And now that that is um, one side done, we just need to duplicate and mirror that across to the other side. Uh, transform and reflect. Sorry if I'm being a bit slow today, guys. I'm still groggy from this cold, okay? Looks like those have actually been shifted up a little bit, um, which may be due to compensate for the extra cloud that he's added in here to make sure that their visual weighting is still on balance. So what I'm gonna do is line those up and then I can just lock away these stars. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna quickly add in these dark blue stars down here, which I'm gonna treat as all the same size. Apart from this one's a little bit smaller. Yeah. And then I'm gonna come through and make these the dark blue that we love. Okay, lock away the stars and let's hide our background layer. And we're doing well so far. Um, not too bad, happy with that. Let's move swiftly on then. The last thing really, is all colors. Now I know the background um, has got different shapes in it and stuff as well, but because there's no stroke on those, um, we're gonna treat them as just colors. Okay, so the next step is to create the background shapes here. Um, the simplest way to do this is just grab your pen tool, making sure you go to the center of your composition and start to think about where these lines will intersect, okay? Now, what you could do is you can make an equidistant pie chart, which might be quite fun. Um, and then turn that pie touch of shapes and then you have each segment here. Um, so the way you do that is you go down to your pie graph and you can just click anywhere and say, give me one of a thousand by a thousand. And then you'd have to come in and choose how many segments you want. So let's say maybe um, one, 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 hit generate. And what that would do is create a number of equidistant segments that you could then 
move into your design. If you want to do it that way, that's the way that I'd suggest. You just come through and you turn this into a shape. However, for the sake of this design, I'm just going to grab my center point here and only draw the stuff that I need to draw. Okay. So I know that there's probably going to be one, two, three, and then a fourth hidden segment here. So if I were to divide this into four equal segments, um, that would work just as well. Okay, so I can come along, I can make sure that, that works, and I can have one shape like so. Okay, draw a second one, which I'm going to put behind it. Oops, again, I think I was a little bit off of my center point there. So what we'll do is we'll start that again. But this time we'll start from here, going down to where our center point should be, like so. And like so. So it looks like he didn't create this from a pie chart, which is what my original thought was. Um, it looks like he just drew this manually, which is why all the center points don't actually align. Okay, no problem. Do whatever you want. Um, whichever way suits you best. I'm just going to create all of these shapes here, and we're just going to push them below each other. Control open square bracket. Um, so that we know we're good to go. Oops, I did the colors the wrong way around because I'm a big dummy, but that's okay. And there you go, happy with that. What we can do now is we can duplicate these shapes. Control C, Control F, Object Transform Reflect. That gives us our other side, which we can just line up roughly. And we can swap out the colors here, like so, like so, and like so. We've now got a really ugly looking background, but that's okay. What we can do is we can create a mask, a clipping mask for this. If we were to group all of these stripes together by selecting all of them and hitting Control G, what we can do is hide those for now. Um, so let's just go through and just hide that group. We can then create a rounded rectangle tool that is the size of our composition, okay? So I'm gonna come along with a rounded rectangle here, make sure it lines up a little bit and we could reduce the corners there so that they're a bit more in alignment. That is perfect. All we need to do now is revisible those rectangles underneath, make sure we have both of them selected and then right click, make clipping mask, and that hides off everything. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the next step that we need to do is just create a separate mask using the same sort of thing for these clouds underneath. So let's release the clipping mask for now, and hide both of them. Um, hide all the stripes and then we're going to come through just roughly um, and draw a little path along here that's going to mask out all of our clouds now there are more um, uh, what's the word probably even correct ways of doing this but my theory is if it works what's the problem so we're just going to come along like so and we're going to grab all of this stuff like that. And if we quickly hide these, we can remember what color the clouds are in the background. I think they are this one, which we'll do for now, in any case. And we've now got our clouds in the same way. So let's grab this rectangle here, duplicate it with Control C and Control F and bring it above the clouds that we just made. We can then select that rectangle, select these clouds, Go over to Pathfinder and choose Intersect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that way, the only way they survive is the intersecting segments. It does take on the color, so if you just bring that color back, we've now got a perfectly overlapping segment there, and we can come through with our clipping mask for this part, for this and our other group, and we can turn that back on, like so. Now we've got our perfectly fitting background, which is brilliant. Um, one thing that isn't um, cut off at the moment is the stroke here, um, but that's okay. We can just go back to our clipping mask and we can duplicate that off again. Control C, Control F, but this time we'll bring it out of the um, layer onto the clouds layer, like so. Quickly reapply this clipping mask. Uh, oops. Make that visible, hide that one. <coughs> Excuse me. 
quickly reapply this clipping mask um, and come back to our clouds layer, grab our rectangle and our group and make that clipping mask also. And there we go, it's now cut off the edges. Uh, sorry, I had to think for a moment there. And like I said, I'm very ill, so <laughs> it stopped me for a minute. Um, okay, great, happy with that. The next step is to fill out the rocket so that it's not looking a little bit lost um, and see where we're going with that. So let's hide everything that we've done so far and start thinking about the colors on this rocket underneath. What we could probably do is bring the opacity of this object back up again, like so. So we've got red, yellow, red, all of these segments are yellow, all these segments are the same blue as the shadow on this rocket here. And the rest of it is white, nice and easy. Let's bring in our rocket and let's reduce the opacity of this again and lock it away. On our rocket layer, let's unlock that. What we can do is we can take for our main ship, the actual shape layer, we can bring in the fill and give it a white fill, like so. Um, but let's do that second so that we can get our um, uh, shadow here working well. Alt and shift and drag on your main rocket layer, okay? And then do the same thing again so that you have an overlap where the right hand side of this rocket is just about a third of the way through the rocket underneath. We can then select both of those, go to our path uh, shape builder again, excuse me, uh, and we can reduce and remove those segments. If we then swap out our fill and our stroke and make it our shadow color, which is this one, again, slightly different, I'm not sure why. What we can also do is grab our wing, or at least one of our wings, Alt, shift that away, cut it and paste it outside. We can then attach that to this shape here. And if we wanted to, we can go in and just delete those two for the sake of simplicity. We can then do the same thing, shift that over, give it the same color, job done. We've now got the shadow or shading rather on our rocket. So let's merge those two shapes together so that they are a single shape um, like so. Not sure why that's not working. Don't know, but let's make it work. Let's grab that and join it to him. And these are now one shape. We can now push this underneath our rocket. Perfect. We can then grab this original rocket shape, control C, control F, swap it out and make it white. And then we can push that all the way down to the bottom too. Okie dokie, easy peasy. Um, let's create these colors underneath. Easiest way to do that is to grab your rectangle tool, like so, give it a nice yellow fill, and simply just drag those over. Again, you could grab this segment, control C, control F, come over here, make sure it's yellow and push it all the way underneath. However, um, because we drew these strokes here on the other layer, um, what that means is we're going to have to cut this, bring this down to our clouds layer, and paste it in place there. Oops, put that back where it needs to be. And bring that underneath those instead. And then we can lock that away again. For here, we can do uh, everything on the rocket layer without too much trouble. We need a yellow rectangle here, push him underneath. And then we need two red ones. Nice and easy. Grab this guy, put him there, grab this guy, put him there. Now this one might need to have a direct selection tool to just shift that in a little bit so it doesn't overlap the blue line. But there you go, finished. Uh, we're done with our rocket. Let's lock this guy away and hide him for now. We can also lock the stars away and hide them. We can lock the clouds away and hide them. And we can lock the stripes away too. But we actually need to work on the clouds now. So let's go to the clouds here and bring them back in. And the last thing we need to do is um, add in the color for these, okay? So if I go in here like so, and I find 
the color that we made before, which is on the stripes layer, we can bring that into the clouds layer underneath. And then we know that this segment is actually different. So let's hide those. Um, excuse me. Let's hide those for now and unlock this and bring the opacity back up so we can see what color it is. It looks like this dark blue is the same as the rocket. And there's a lighter one just for this segment of the clouds down here, which works just fine. So let's, um, again, reduce this guy's opacity down and lock him away. Go back to our clouds and make them the right colors. Let's get this one and make it this darker blue. And then you can probably guess what we're going to do. We're going to come in here and we're just going to draw underneath our light blue section. Give it a little bit of curve at the bottom there because it can be seen. And we'll make it light blue. Okay. Let's grab this. And if we're lucky, we've still got a path here. Correct, we do. We can grab this one as well, copy that, paste it in place, but bring it above our little extra segment that we've made down here. Then with both of those selected, you can just use intersect and the only thing that remains is the new path that we've drawn. Let's push that underneath the clouds and voila, we're completely done with the center part of our composition. Doesn't it look good? Happy with that. Oh yes. All right, brilliant. Let's collapse all those down so we know what we're working with and let's start working on the stamps around the edges. This one should be nice and easy. Let's draw a rectangle, straight up white rectangle. I'm happy with that. Let's make it the correct size though. Maybe this big. There we go. Uh, and now what we need to do is just create a number of circles that we can subtract from this design, okay? Um, so if we create a small ellipse, again using the corner here, let's just make that a little bit bigger because it's gonna bug me otherwise. Um, like so. Let's create an ellipse here using the corner to maybe halfway through. So it digs into about half of the uh, stamp ticket, okay? Let's duplicate that into each corner. Okay. And then let's duplicate it into the middle. Like so. And into the middle like so. Let's just hide these other layers whilst we're working on this. Then we can copy and paste. Now you could do this using um, paths and dots and dashes and things like that. But I think because these are all equidistant from each other, it doesn't really matter and won't take too much time to do it this way instead. And then you have just a little bit more control over the distance between your shapes. Uh, let's take this one. Uh, And this one too. And then we can duplicate these all the way down. And duplicate these all the way across. In fact, we could probably just take uh, two of them. Like so. Um, now, the problem with this technique, which I've just realized, <laughs> is um, that unless you're very good at maths, and aspect ratio maths, you're not actually going to be able to create equidistance between the ratio of the distance between the shapes along the side and the shapes along the bottom and top. Um, so if we were to distribute these vertically and distribute these vertically, unless we're very lucky, yeah, the distance between here and the distance between these shapes here aren't going to be the same. Um, which it looks like they're not. So it might be the best way to actually do this is to create a pattern brush that has a row of these different shapes. Alternatively, you can create a section that you know fits both width and height of the stamp. Um, let me show you what I mean. If I select this and I choose minus front, okay, 
and then we show our finished design. Uh, oops, with a background, of course. Let's just grab this blue for the background that he's done here. I'll show you what I mean. If we take this one, like so. This looks pretty close. We've been quite lucky. You know, the distance between the gap here and the distance between the gap here are pretty much there. They're not perfect, but they're pretty much equal. I'd be happy with that. However, if you wanted to make sure they were perfectly equal, you could do a um, dashed line, like so. If we were to take this, thicken them up a bit. Okay, you can turn these into dashes, give them round ends, like so. You could make the dash length equal so that it is, um, oops, sorry, excuse me, that's the wrong thing. Um, a circle, yeah, rather than uh, a line, okay? And then you could do that all the way around the edges and you'd get your equidistant circles. Um, I'm pretty happy with that as it is anyway, so I'm not going to bother because that will take a while and this video is already way too long. But there's, suffice to say, there's a million different ways to do the same thing. As I'm doing these, I haven't sort of practiced them beforehand because I wanted my thought process behind how I'm sort of creating these to be evident. Well, that means there's some of the things I'm going to try aren't going to work. But that's also a good lesson as well. Just because something doesn't work doesn't mean it was a bad decision, bad choice. It just means you know for next time that that's not the way to particularly do it in that circumstance. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the deconstruction finished and we're going to go over to the analysis section and we're going to see and compare the two different designs, the original and the one that we've created. Part three, conclusions. OK, so here are our two designs next to each other. The first thing I notice, of course, is that I made these circles around the edge way too big. They should be much smaller, uh, but it illustrates the point. It's not particularly an issue, to be honest. Um, it does look better, much smaller, but that's just the way it is. I don't mind that. Um, we could go in and take these circles, make them smaller, you know. Um, additionally, I think these lines are a little bit thicker in the original. Perhaps not six points thick, but perhaps not five. I think they might be halfway in between. Um, and I think some of the uh, stars have got a little bit of a fatter body than they do on our one as well. However, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks all right. Um, again, it's such a brilliant little design, just making it, you know, incorporated into a stamp sort of aesthetic setting. I think it works really well. Kudos again um, to the creator. Color palette, stamp setting, contrast between the curves and the straight lines. I think this works great. I really do. Um, really well done. Thank you again to um, just ask Galaberda. Please go check him out on Gri on Gribble, on Dribble, rather. Um, he's got some really great work on there. Not not just these ones. He's got some cool BB-8 stuff, some cool Pokeball stuff. He's a really really great designer. So please do go and check him out. Um, and if you want more of this sort of thing, do let me know. Hopefully next time it'll be a bit more constrained because I won't be so terribly ill. Um, but yeah. I really enjoy doing these and I think I learn a lot as well in terms of how to break stuff down and deconstruct them. Let me know if you want more. If you do, great. If you don't, that's also fine. I know these aren't for everyone. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I do hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.